You're listening to episode three of the Improvement Project 2.0, and today is all about goals. Let's go. Welcome to the Improvement Project, a podcast that will encourage you to get curious about what's going on in your brain that might be holding you back from achieving your big dreams and goals. I'm your life coach, Dr. Peggy Malone. After 19 years of working with patients to help them take on better habits for health and wellness, as well as working with clients one-on-one as their life coach, I've learned how the thoughts that we habitually think are the key to getting what we want in this life. I've learned that a coach can help you recognize what's going on in your mind, help you get clear on your goals, and then hold you accountable on your way to your best life. Listen in each week as I help you discover why you are the way you are and how you can lean in to self-inquiry on the way to being an even better you. Let's get after it. Well, hello friends. Today's episode is episode three of a brand new improvement project, and I'm so excited that you have chosen to listen in. On today's episode, we are going to check in with your goals for 2022. Now you might be thinking, but Peggy, we are already three weeks into the new year. Shouldn't we have done this sooner? Well, my answer to this is maybe. A lot of people set goals right at the beginning of the new year. Maybe you set some goals on January 1st and now three weeks into 2022. Maybe you are doing great with your goals or maybe you've noticed that they don't seem as important as they did on New Year's Day or maybe you're already sliding back into your old habits and routines and thinking that maybe you'll set some new goals next January 1st. But guess what? January 1st is an arbitrary date to set a goal and you get to decide when you want to set goals. So how about today? Let's start with why we would even want to set a goal. If you are into personal development at all, and I know you are if you are listening to this, you will know that there is magic in writing down your goals. This is something that I have discussed a bunch of times in the past on the podcast. The people that do the simple act of putting pen to paper or fingers to keyboard and taking their dreams and goals out of their heads and putting them more concretely into the world are way more likely to achieve big things. The goals can be big or small, very ambitious, or things that you know you'll accomplish easily. It's up to you and how much you want to challenge yourself this year. Now, there are different ways to set goals And as I said, you get to decide how you want to set your goals. If you've been listening for a while, you may remember that since 2018, the way I've prepared and presented my goals for the year was based on something I learned from my online pretend best friend, Gretchen Rubin. So just to give you a quick recap, every year, starting with 2018, instead of committing to New Year's resolutions, my original podcast co-host Jenny and I created a list of goals for the year. In 2018, we did 18 goals. In 2019, 19 goals. In 2020, 20 goals. And then for 2021, my friend Jamie Henderson subbed in and she and I came up with a list of 21 goals that we wanted to accomplish in 2021. So if I was to continue with this trend, I would make a list of 22 goals that I want to accomplish in 2022. I was thinking I should do this because that's what I've done for the four years previous, but it just wasn't resonating with me this year. So I just made a list of cool things that I wanted to call in to my life this year without being specific about how many things were on that list. And after I finished my list, there were 13 things on it, and I'm happy with that number. So I'll share 10 of those things with you because maybe they'll offer some inspiration and Also, they'll offer me some accountability, which I appreciate. Thank you. Okay, number one, uh, if you've been listening for a while, you might remember that John and I are uh, still in process of doing a big renovation on our house. So in 2022, one of the goals is to have our house renovation completely 100% done and amazing and awesome. And we are moved in, living in it and loving it. It is really our dream house, and I'm so excited to start making memories there. So that's number one. Number two, sell our temporary house and make a good profit. So we've been living in a temporary house while the other house is getting renovated, and uh, the goal is to sell it in the next few months. So uh, the cool part is the market is on our side as the seller uh, for this project right now, so I'm very grateful for that. So that's uh, number two. 
Number three, uh, we didn't get to do very much camping last summer just because we were so entrenched in the renovation project. So I'm putting on the list that I would like to go camping five times this year. So spring, summer, fall. Uh, Number four, a hella skiing adventure out west with John. So the cool part about this goal is that it's on the books. Uh, This is happening in the next while and I'm so excited and it's really hella snowboarding because that's what we do, but that doesn't sound as cool or as common. So uh, this adventure we're going to be doing and I will report back and let you know how that goes. Number five, um, this is something that um, I've been jonesing a little bit to do a bit more running. I haven't done very much in the last couple of years. So on the list, I put run a half marathon for my friend Jamie's birthday in September. So the last time I ran a half was in 2017 or 2018. So it'll be good to get my legs moving in that way again. All right. Number six, uh, if COVID allows, I think that it would be a very cool goal to take a trip somewhere tropical late next fall. So obviously this is one of those things that um, we wait and see, but um, I'm putting it on the list because I'm trying to call it in and manifest it. It would be lovely to go and see the sunshine again. All right. Uh, number seven, continue to work with coaching clients one-on-one and attract even more clients into my practice. And if you're listening, maybe that's you. If you are thinking of working with me, do it this year and then both of us will reach our goals. All right, number eight, apply for and be accepted into a business mastermind program to improve my coaching and business skills. Number nine, be more consistent on social media, especially Instagram. If you've been listening for a while, you know that this is one that I come back to over and over again. And I have fits and starts. I'm hoping to have more consistency. And number 10, I want to uh, provide you, my listener, with 52 podcast episodes, and I want 12 of those, uh, which is about once a month, to be with a guest. All right, the other three that I have on my list, I'm going to keep for myself, but believe me, they are also awesome. Okay, let's talk a little bit more specifically about goals and how you might be thinking as you set some goals. A goal can be any outcome that you are working toward. It can be any result that you want, who you want to be, who you are working toward being in the future. You can start your goal setting process by defining what is the outcome or the result that you want, and then get really clear on what that looks like and feels like for you in your life. Your goals can be tangible and easily measurable or they may be more subjective and are more based on how you want to feel in your life. So this here, I'm just going to interject for a second, is a little opposite of the way I've described goals in the past. We've often learned the whole SMART goal situation, which is specific, measurable, attainable, uh, relevant, and time-based. I think I've done that right. And so the measurable piece is always part of... um, a smart goal. And so if a goal is less tangible, it feels less measurable. If it's about how you want to feel, that's hard to measure. So we are going to talk about how you can measure a goal that feels less tangible. So stay tuned. All right. My goals that I shared just now in my list, they're all pretty tangible and measurable, but some goals, as I said, may be less measurable and more subjective. So for example, if your goal is to run a half marathon, you will know that you're at the finish line when you have run 21.1 kilometers. And as it turns out, you'll likely be at the actual finish line if it's at a race that where you're doing the half marathon. So this is easy to measure and it's easy to know that you've reached the goal. But maybe your goal is to feel more confident or to be calmer around your children or to be less reactive with your partner or less reactive while you are driving. These are all great goals, but are a little more abstract and are based more on how you are feeling in certain areas of your life and are a bit trickier to measure and to know when you've reached your goal. So again, as I said, we'll address that in a minute. But first, once you've defined what your goals are, once you've picked your goals, now you have to know where are you starting? So before you get after it and figure out where you are going, make sure that you look around and take stock of where are you now? Think about it when you walk into the mall and you want to go to the gap. That's your goal. You could just wander around aimlessly until you find it. And that's a strategy and sometimes that works. Or you could go to the map inside every entrance at every mall 
and look for the you are here sticker. Once you have your bearings and you know where you are, it's way easier to know how to find the gap and you get there way quicker. So the same thing is true when you're thinking about your goals. If you aren't sure where you are now when it comes to a certain goal, it's hard to know if the goal is even possible in the timeline that you want it to happen in, let alone how to get to the finish line to accomplish the goal. So in our above example, if your goal is to run a half marathon, it's good to know how far can you comfortably run now and how do you feel? That gives a starting point to make our plan from. If your goal is to be more confident or calmer with your kids or less reactive with your partner or while you're driving, you could figure out where you are now by first journaling a bit on why this is an important goal for you and then making your starting point a bit more objective by rating it on a scale of one to 10. So 10 being the most confident, the calmest, the least reactive, and one being not at all confident, not at all calm, or the most reactive. So once you've established that you know where you are, you found that you are here sticker. Now you have to get going on getting after the goals and deciding how you will measure your progress along the way. So a question you can ask yourself here when you are thinking about your goals is, how will I know that it's working? How will I know that I'm making progress? This is basically asking yourself how you will measure the goal and your progress toward the goal. So if it's a half marathon, you can look ahead three months out and create a training plan. So each week you'll have a running assignment to do or several. And as the weeks go by, you should see your endurance improving and your long run distance getting longer. If all of these things are happening, you will know that you are making good progress towards your goal of competing and doing a half marathon. So this brings us to that question. How will you know if you are making progress when it's a less tangible goal? So when my clients are working toward goals that are less measurable, I have them rate the outcome they are looking for at the end of each day or each week on a scale of one to 10. So if the goal is to feel calmer with your kids, at the end of the day, ask yourself, how calm did I feel today with the kids and rate it on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most calm, one being not calm at all. As the weeks go by, you can check in and see if your average rating numbers are trending upward. If they are, you are making progress. If not, you could work on the plan and do some changes to the strategies that you are using to help you to get to that goal. And this is a a really great place where a coach can help you with some of those strategies. All right. No matter what your goal is, whether it is obviously measurable or more subjective, looking out into the future and picking a date for when you will have achieved it and then breaking the goal down into smaller pieces is a very effective way to make progress. At New Year's resolution time, many people, myself included on occasion, have been guilty of resolving to do all of the things eat healthier, meditate daily, run a marathon, finish all the projects around the house, see friends more, etc. And then when it comes to the end of the year, we look back at those goals we made and it feels like nothing really happened. So first of all, in this example, none of those goals that I mentioned just now were measurable and we didn't make a plan and break the goals down into smaller pieces throughout the year. So whatever your goal is, pick a timeline an end date for your goal, and then work backwards and break the goal into smaller pieces over the timeline. Now, this is something that people hear this strategy all the time, but the reason you hear it all the time is because it really works and it allows you to get a good progress report on where you are at any point during your journey toward the goal and how far you have to go still to reach the goal. It's important to remember here that Their special sauce is to check back in often with your progress over time as you are working toward the goal so you can course correct if you aren't heading in the right direction. So for some people, this will mean looking at their goals daily. For some people, maybe weekly or for others, monthly. Basically, you want to just make sure you're checking in often so that you can course correct if you need to. You can change up strategies if you need to. You can get help if you need to. Checking in often is key. So if you made some goals on January 1st and you haven't checked in with them and it's three weeks into the year, check in with them now and put it on your calendar to check in at least monthly, if not weekly with your goals for 2022. The more you check in on them and course correct, the more likely you are to get to the finish line of those goals. So to summarize, when it comes to your goals, 
especially as we're talking about 2022. Let's talk about your goals for 2022. Pick a goal or several goals and define it or define them. Figure out where you are starting with respect to the goal. Ask yourself how you will measure your progress and how you will know you have achieved the goal. Pick an end date that you would like to reach the goal by and then break the goal up into smaller pieces over that timeline. Check in often on your progress toward the goal. All right, that's it. I would love to hear what goals you have on your list for 2022. Let me know. And if you know that you want a certain goal or a result or an outcome and this process feels overwhelming, or if you feel like you need a guide or some accountability or someone to help you to like create the goals and to create this process for yourself, schedule a free 60 minute consult with me so we can explore how working with me as your coach can help you check off all of your 2022 goals. Let's get after it. And that's it for this episode of the improvement project. If you enjoyed today's show and don't want to ever miss an episode, you can subscribe on Apple podcasts or wherever you usually listen. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate it. If you would leave a rating and review to let me know what you think of the show and to help others find the improvement project. I would love to connect with you on the socials. The place where I like to hang out online the most is Instagram. And you can find me there at Dr. Peggy Malone. As usual, you'll find all of the resources and links that were mentioned during today's show in the show notes at theimprovementproject.com. If you are interested in learning more about me and my work and perhaps how we could work together, come visit me at drpeggymalone.com forward slash coach. Until next time, my friends, stay focused and get after it.